From New York, New York, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. He was bamboozled. I swear to God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues. You really care about it's at every con of a radio talk program. We hear the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing whacker or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. I want to talk to you guys for a moment about kids. I don't know how you do it. How do you do it? You know, um, everybody who listens to this show on a regular basis knows I don't have kids. Uh, that is not because I'm incapable. It's because it was by design. No kids here. Don't have any. Don't want any. And um, I mean, I don't love kids. I saw my nephew Ryan yesterday. In fact, he was here in the studio with me yesterday. And... Um, I was very proud of him because it's not easy for a seven-year-old boy to sit quietly when, of course, what he wants is to be the center of attention. That's how I was when I was seven years old. That's how I will be at 57 years old. That's right. It was great to see him. But the great thing about seeing him is not just seeing him and knowing him and hanging out with him and talking to him, seeing how he thinks. But uh, when the day or the weekend or the week is over, um, my brother packs him up with all his video games and everything he brings along in tow and takes him home. My brother has to do all the dirty work. My brother has to, you know, take him to school, pick him up, uh, tell him what not to do, deal with him when he gets cranky or tired. Deal with him when he won't eat his dinner. See, I don't have to do any of that stuff. I'm the uncle. I get nothing but the good part. And uh, I love what I have. I do. But for me, I don't want the responsibility of raising a child. It's uh, responsibility takes time, costs money. I would have to lower my lifestyle to raise another human being. And, uh, you know, it's one thing to rescue a family member when they're in trouble or that kind of thing. But you don't need to create new ones. There's nothing selfish about that. So uh, I never had kids. But when I spend time uh, with my nephew, I, I think about all the guys who listen to this show who have to deal with kids. You've got kids. You have to deal with them. You have to... Uh, you have to, uh, you know, for everything from teaching them to wipe their ass to uh, how to eat their food, making them eat food. You have to teach them basics, you know, everything from math to reading to don't put your hand on the stove, don't put your finger in the electric socket, uh, don't watch the Playboy channel, <laughs> I mean, whatever it is. Uh, there are so many things you have to do. Then, and whether it's the man or the woman, it doesn't matter, your spouse will have opinions about what you ought to be doing and how you ought to be raising your kid. This is a call we get all the time from people who say that the, the, they're arguing about the kids. They argue about the kids. It's stressful. Uh, it makes people crazy. And I have to be honest with you, when I see people who have children, you can see the miles it puts on the odometer. People who have kids look older than people who don't. 
because they've had to worry the kid got lost at the zoo or lost in the park or lost in the subway somewhere, if you live where there's a subway. You're always worrying that your kid is going to, you know, fall out a window or stick his hand in boiling water. <laughs> and it ages you. And it shows. So I wonder about you guys out there, like, how do you deal with this? I mean, it uh, affects everything from your marriage. Now your wife got what she wanted, right? She got you to contribute your sperm. And now she's got a steady stream of income coming from you to pay for your progeny. So now she does not need you for anything anymore except to take the garbage out of the proper time and, you know, show up at the cashola. Any of you guys suddenly find you have a sex-free relationship. Or virtually sex-free. Or my favorite, sex on a schedule. I think we'll have some time Thursday night. I think I have a sitter. <laughs> what is that? And um, I just wonder how you do it. And um, obviously some people think it's worth it and others don't. But we, we can talk about that too. But, um, you know, as an observer, I, I, I hate when people say, you hate kids. I, I love kids. Love them. Care about what happens to them. Believe they should be treated right, educated properly, fed well, feel safe as much as possible. I, I just think they have to, uh, they have to have all of that. And, and I want them to have all of that. But I must say that I wonder, you know, uh, what that does to your life. You know, I have known people who live that uh, globe-trotting lifestyle. Expensive vacations, weekends to meet girlfriends in other cities. You know, sports cars, all the toys, everything. I know guys who had to cut back that lifestyle to make way for a wife and kids, or, God forbid, a girlfriend and kids, and suddenly now you're not the globetrotter you used to be. Suddenly you are, instead of flying around the world, you're flying from school to school picking up your children, or instead of eating at uh, expensive restaurants like in L.A., we would have like Patina or Providence or one of the really good places, AOC. You know, now you've had to uh, step it down to a fast food joint. And is it all worth it? That's what I'd like to find out from you. 1-800-5800-TOMS. 1-800-5800-866. Like it. Hey, Tom, appreciate your work out there. Out where? Uh, out in America. You're doing whatever your American needs to hear, Tom. The Tom Likes Show. It's the Tom Michael Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Alan on the Tom Michael Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Great. Hey. Tom, can you hear me? I, I, I said I was great, and then that's kind of a cue. I was waiting for you to start speaking. When no, I no, no, say no, back, great... Back to here. Sorry about that, Tom. That means it's time for you to start filling in the next space in the conversation. You say, how are you? I say, great. Then if you're looking at a script, it would have, you know, Alan and a colon, and then your comment would fit in there. Got it, got it. Well, hey, listen, Tom, I, I, I love you and enjoy you, but i got to tell you, you're dead wrong about um, not wanting kids. I, I just had a little baby two uh, months ago. So and... every, everybody should want kids. Everyone no, who doesn't want everybody. kids is wrong. But but I'm telling you, everybody, you know, you, you kind of make a statement that everybody shouldn't want kids. But I, I had a baby, and it's just been the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Well, She's it's been good. great for you, but it isn't great for everybody. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't really care about, uh, you know, if it's great for everybody or not. It's definitely enhanced my life. So Yeah, but, uh, but you, you know, told me that I'm wrong. You well, I'm saying I'm that you're, 
You're you're def you're missing out. You're missing out on no. Uh, what what it, am I what missing out on? What it, what it can bring to you. I mean, she's just you know, like I I love to go home in the middle of the afternoon and just you know hold her and listen to her and all the little things that seem like you know such a pain aren't really a pain. Changing the diapers, feeding her, all that is actually really enjoyable. And it, I mean, it sounds corny and it you know kind of. It goes against, uh, you know, the, the the fun that you seem to have, but there's also a lot of fun. I don't see how it could be more enjoyable than what I just did. For example, not only could I spend what it costs to get killer tickets to the last games at Yankee Stadium and Chase Stadium here in New York, where I, I came to, to visit my brother, and that was a birthday present I gave to him. Not only could I afford the cost, and trust me, those tickets were not cheap, um, I also could drop everything and fly to New York. No babysitters, no nannies, no finding out how much it costs to put a kid on, on a plane, uh, no having to find somebody to take care of the kid while I'm at the game, no having to buy a ticket for the kid so we all have to go to the game and then have to leave in the fourth inning because the kid is crying. I mean, you can't do what I did. Well, but don't you think that there's a time for that? I feel like, you know, I mean, that that time doesn't have to be the rest of your life. I don't need to be 50 years old and still be doing that. You know, I've done that and had a blast well, doing I, it. you know what? I've done lots of enjoyable things. I've had sex. I've eaten breakfast. I, I never say to myself, you know what? I've eaten breakfast. No need to do that anymore. Yeah, but... but Is, you know, doesn't what? there come a day when you stop having sex? I've already had it. No, that doesn't stop. doesn't stop if you have a oh, kid. Why, why would you stop doing enjoyable things? I don't understand. Why would you say, well, I've already done that, so isn't there a time to stop? But I'm not saying stop. I'm just saying that there are new, and if you had never been to uh, Amsterdam before, you know, you would want to go to, to Amsterdam. You would want to try the next new adventure. The next new adventure for me is having a baby. You know, having a baby is, uh, you know, it's definitely, it's, uh, it's, it's work, but it's, uh, it's enjoyable work. And well, then it, you know, uh, again, if down- you enjoy it, I would not, I believe it, I, I would not, um, uh, you know, we need all the people in the world who enjoy raising their kids. And if you enjoy it, I would not try to talk you out of it. The problem is people like you who enjoy raising your kids then come after people like me and say that we're wrong for not wanting to do what you do. Well, I guess wrong in, in, in preaching that having kids is somebody else's business. I'm, I'm here to tell you that, you know, having a kid is also a great thing, too. For those who want to do those things. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'll I mean, tell you, while, while, you were at, uh, while you were out at Ralph's picking up some more Pampers, uh, I was at Yankee Stadium last Sunday. Watching you know, the last I've been, game I've been ever to Yankee played Stadium there. myself too, and you yeah, know, but no, no, there, there wasn't just look. 190 million people have been to Yankee Stadium. That's not the point. I was at Yankee Stadium the very last day before they closed the gates. It was important. It was important to my brother. It was important to me. But you know what? You were saying how it was enjoyable spending time with your nephew. I'm saying that, you know, bringing, and you say you, you ship him off with your brother and he takes care of all the, the nasty stuff, but taking care of that nasty stuff isn't that bad. You know, taking care of that nasty stuff is actually. Yeah, but but, but really, if, you don't, if you don't have to do it, why would you want to? I don't have to. I don't have yeah, to. Yeah, I mean, you I, do. Yeah, you gotta you gotta change that diaper, you know, at least once in a while. Right. I mean, we 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 actually have a nanny that does that, but, uh, oh, but you know. Oh, oh, you're telling me how much fun it is to raise a kid, but now we find out you have a nanny. Well, I, we do. We do. It's so def- much fun to tell your nanny, Lupe. Could you change the diaper, please? Thank you so much. Uh, you know, we're it's it's, it's so it, much know, fun. Exception, but. Uh, but yeah, it's you know you you would have a nanny too, Tom. If you had a child, but that's my you, point. You, you, if I don't want to do it myself, why would I do it at all? Because you can, you can have a nanny. You see, you, you can... when you first called in, you were a complete phony. You're calling in to tell me that the the the, the dirty work could actually be fun. But now we find out you don't do the dirty work. The nanny does the dirty work. Definitely not all of the dirty work, but I definitely I, I do I do some dirty work. Well, if the dirty work was that much fun, you wouldn't need a nanny. Believe me, believe me, a, a nanny is if you can if you can have a nanny, a nanny is the way to go. But uh, oh. but I'm just saying, 
You would have a nanny too, Tom. You could you could certainly afford a nanny. You could. Well, what would be the point of that? Would be my would be Michael Jackson, you know, put a kerchief around my kid's mouth and then send him off with a nanny. Yeah, it's it, it's not like that. It's not like that at all. It's it's definitely a you know it's it's a joint effort. But uh, you know, luckily I don't have to do all of the dirty work. But you know, I'm I, I'm just saying that it's 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 a good time too to to have a, a kid and and see her grow and go through all the little changes that you know you see. There's there's definitely I see something. that in my nephew. He's I mean, he's seven years old. I see that in him. But you wouldn't want to instill some of what you have to offer the guidance. Oh, that you I could... do. Oh, I do. Oh, I do. Yes, yes. I instill all kinds of things in my nephew, and then I go home. All right. Hang on I... a second here, Alan. John, what did you want to say to Alan? Uh, you know, live it up now, bro, because it don't last for long. You know, uh, my daughter just turned eighteen. And my son is uh, 13 now, and they are the both the most self-absorbed little, you know, I can't say that on the radio. But anyway, yeah, uh, today kids are just, they're totally into themselves and video games and what can you buy for them today, where can you take them tomorrow. You know, good luck, dude. You know, change those diapers now. Yeah, I remember what it was like, but uh, after 25 years of working my ass off and passing up opportunities to to uh, travel the world because I had to stay home and take care of the kids and couldn't be uh, going anywhere without them. Yeah, so good luck, man. Oh. You know what, John? I'm just getting started, but I got to tell you that some of that's probably, you know, what you present to your kid too. I mean, if if you know, I know, you know, being being self centered and spoiled is is, you know, got to come from somewhere. And, uh, you know, if, if you kind of, you know, you instill other values in your kids, then maybe they wouldn't be that way. They wouldn't turn out that way. It wasn't me. I'm out working my butt off at least 60 hours a week, so that left my wife to do it. And it sounds like you got a nanny to help her do it. I mean, what does your wife do? My I mean, wife my wife stays home and, and raises the kid, too. Wow. So yeah. you don't think anything's uh, going to come of that with... Being self-centered, having two women uh, looking after one kid or two kids. I mean, we're you know pretty conscientious about uh, about what we want to you know how we want to raise our, our daughter. So it's you know it's it's definitely about you know having the values and and um, you know and and not letting her get caught up in the Hollywood BS. But yeah, I mean, I sent mine to uh, Hollywood you know, BS. Mine went to Christian schools. I, I spent, you know, lots of hours working to pay for those Christian schools. But I tell you what, you know, in the, at the end of the day, the kids are going to turn out like whoever, whether it's you or your wife or the nanny, whoever has that strongest personality, that's who they're going to emulate. And my kids are nothing like me. They're more like their mom. You mm -hmm. know, unfortunately, I wasn't there to be uh, be able to be around them all the time, but... Uh, you know, Tom's right. If I had to do all over again, guys, I'd get them, get them snipped. Wow. So if you had to do it all over again, John, you wouldn't have had your kids? Nope. Wow. That right now. Wow. I would not have done it. I had my first one when I was 23 years old. Okay. Well, so, I mean, God bless you, man, but I, I hope that I'm not in that situation when my daughter's 18. Yeah, I hope you aren't either. I mean, my kids are both good kids, but I tell you what, I work my butt off for it, and there is no, there's no, gee, thanks, Dad. We sure, uh, we sure appreciate what you've done for us for these last 18 years. You know, there's none of that. It's like, hey, you know, what kind of car can you buy me? I'm 18 now. You know, I'm, she's already going to an expensive university that, by the way, I'd go into deep hawk for. And, mm. uh, you know, there's still not a thank you for it. Wow. So but, all I can say is good luck to you. Keep an eye on them and uh, stay, keep them close. Cause Cause I, I, done... I spent a lot of time working my butt off to uh, to pay all the bills. I regret it now because, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't have been living like Tom, but, hey, maybe Gino or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck I to you, John. I think you Gino. All right, uh, guys, thank you both for the calls. 1-800-5800-TOM. Gino the screener. Let's say hello here to, uh, look at these calls. 
Alex on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? I'm a long time great. listen. First time caller. And let, let me say this to all the gentlemen out there. Tom is 110% accurate. Okay? And if you need to go to someone to give you some insight, go to Tom Likas. And let me explain why. I have two girls, okay? My first girl was from uh, my high school sweetheart, who now currently, uh, you know, 10 years later, she wants more child support. Uh, not only that, she wants me to uh, pay for uh, my my uh, little girl's school, coupled with the fact that she wants me to pay for $10,000 in attorney's fees, okay? And at the, the bottom line is she wants the money, but she doesn't want to allow me to see my daughter. And so all this... And, and, and God bless my daughter. I love her to death. However, it's not worth it. At the end of the day, it is not worth the misery, the drama, and just to endure through this. And I agree 110% with John and, uh, you know, what he said. You know, it's great, but the life, there's more to life. And it's just unfortunate that, you know, we men sometimes have to endure through this. Good points, Alex. And uh, I'm glad that, uh, you know, you've been for the front line, so you know what I'm talking about. I, I have not had kids, and I have not had to regret having kids. I've just looked around me knowing guys like you who found out the hard way. Well, well Tom, let me say this. You, you, you're you 110% correct from A to Z, okay, from marriage to kids to raising kids to, to uh, you know, what one individual wants out of life. And if anyone wants uh, a happy life, you don't necessarily need to get married to be happy with a woman. The bottom line is, you know, what do you bring to the table? If you're happy within yourself, you don't need anyone to make you happy. And I can guarantee you, a woman's not going to make you happy. And if you're any men out there who are looking for that, you're looking down the wrong path and the path to a straight dead end. And so, Tom, I, I just want to thank you for everything. You're, you're honest in, in your uh, sentiment. You're up front. And, you know, I, I can certainly appreciate a man who's up front, who has been through what you've been through, and can come out and, and honestly speak about it. So I want to thank you again, Tom. Alex, thank you. Appreciate the call. Of course, uh, you know, what does a woman bring to the table in a marriage after having kids? Usually it's uh, Cinnabons, Haagen-Dazs, Sara Lee. That's what women bring to the table. Oh, and your balls on a silver platter. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to... Uh, hmm. Sarah on the Tom Likas Show. Hi, Sarah. Hey, how you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay, Sarah. Um, I'm a mother. I'm married. And um, I've been listening to your show for a while. And I can't say that I disagree with anything that you ever say. But sometimes having a kid is worth it. I mean, for me, because... Sometimes. Uh, Sometimes, you know. Sometimes having a kid is worth it. Yes. That sometimes. doesn't sound like a, an out and out endorsement. That sounds like you know. I mean, even a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> exactly. And um, my husband, he's in Iraq right now, so I have someone to talk to. I'm a stay at home mom, which you're probably going to bash me for, but I just got out of the military, so. No, I'm not bashing you for it. I think. Uh, if uh, if you're going to raise a kid and you can afford to be a stay-at-home mom, I think that's great. I don't have a problem oh, with that. Thank you. I think people should raise their kids because yes, I think that's the I... main reason kids are such brats most of the time is because they're being raised by the nanny and the daycare center and the babysitter you got from a Valpac coupon and uh, whatever. Exactly. And, I mean, the point, the good thing about raising your own kid is you can... Built him to be a good citizen. You know, I mean, what I'm saying is it's not good if you're 16, you don't have a house, you don't have a car, you don't, you know, but it is worth Well, somehow, it. though, I don't think uh, Mrs. Hitler intended little Adolf to grow up to be what he became. Do you? No, I don't. I'll bet she was heartbroken. I mean, outside influences are there also, so... You can't really always stop them from getting into Well, everything. that's my point. So, I mean, to say, oh, you can raise and be a good person. Well, you might or might not. Well, you can try. And and when you're 
when well, you're born, yes, you can try. It's fun. <laughs> you know, like the New York Knickerbockers try to get a playoff position. They can try, <laughs> but it'll never happen. Yeah, but, you know, at least this may happen, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which is less likely, uh, your kid uh, growing up to be a good person or the New York Knickerbockers making the playoffs. Well, I hope it's that my kid will grow up and be a good person. <laughs> yes. And you know what? I will teach him to listen to you. Because well, that part is good. Yes. By the way, if your kid grows up to be a good person, one thing I tell you for sure, he won't be playing for the New York Knickerbocker. No, he won't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. All right. Thank you so much, Tom. Appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Rob on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I, I got the same scenario. I, I, went, I was 22 when I had my first kid, a son. And then 10 years later, I met this other gal. And, you know, she said she didn't want to get married. She didn't want to have kids. I said, great. I don't want to have kids. I don't want to get married either. Next thing you know, I buy a home. She moves in with me. And next thing she's telling me that she wants to have a kid. And I'm like, well, what, wait a second. I told you what we, did, we didn't want to have kids. Then I, she, we didn't want to have kids. Next thing you know, she's pregnant eight months later. And now, you know, she was, uh, you know, before we met, she was driving a Porsche. And, you know, and I was just driving an old beat-up Honda. Now she still wants to live that lifestyle. And I'm, I'm here struggling, trying to pay the mortgage. And she's still driving. Now she's driving a Mercedes. And I'm in, like, you know, barely making the, the mortgage now. You know, it's just uh, it's incredible. These well, women. now you see what your position is. Your position is to be a, a sperm donor and a human wallet. Yeah, exactly. So now I'm miserable, and I, you know what I mean? I don't want to leave her because then I'll be paying child support for two kids. Married once, and then I started looking at information about her. Couldn't find out. I found out she's married twice. She only told me about the first marriage. Oh, boy. Did you confront her about that? Yeah. And she said, oh, well, you know... I, I, she was married, and it, you know, the marriage that we had, the, the first marriage I had, wasn't, uh, you know, valid. I go, baloney, man, what are you talking about? I start finding out all this stuff about later on, and then the top of she's older than me. She's five years older than me, and she acts like an adolescent. You know, I'm 38, she's 42, and, you know, I, it's just I've been miserable, and, I, and, and I'm stuck now. Now i got to just stick with it. Let me ask you a question, though, Rob. Uh, did, didn't she show any signs of that kind of behavior uh, before you married her? You know what? There was signs here and there, but, you know, I thought she had it together. You know, she, 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 it was like a facade. She was driving a nice car. I thought she had a good job. And then all of a sudden, we move into this house. You know, the reason I got with her was because, you know, I didn't want somebody making, you know, less than me. I want somebody where they were competitive as me as far as, you know, making all the money. And then she lost her job, and here she said she was going to help me with stuff around the house. She didn't fall through on that, and she still hasn't followed through. And now she's she's paying, she's barely making a payment on a Mercedes that she just bought. And, and you know, here we're struggling, and she's, she's talking about being a family. Well, where's the family? You're too busy worrying about yourself. You don't have to worry about me and the, my daughter and everything. And then to top it off, our daughter sleeps with us. She sleeps with us. She's four years old. She still sleeps with us in our bed. Let's talk a little bit about uh, now, Rob, what you're going to do in the future. That's the problem. I don't know what I want to do. I want to leave her, but then again, I don't. You know what I mean? Because then I'm already paying $600 of child support for my six-year-old son. You know? I don't know how much I'm going to be paying for this one. I'll be in the poorhouse. So the having kids thing sounded like a good idea on paper. Well, I didn't want kids after my first one, but, you know, she didn't either. And then she popped, told me she was pregnant. So she's got two little annuities there. Yeah, pretty much. You're going to be paying until you're dead. That's it. That's all I'm working for. That's all I'm working. I'm doing side work. I'm working my job, making side, doing side jobs just to pay uh, what I got to pay. Just, to, you know, to go through life right now. Mm hmm. I'm miserable. Wow. So you would not recommend it to others? No. Out in LA. No, 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 no. Either you got to make sure, they got to. You know, you got to you have to go online, and it's like it's it's finance before romance, Tom. You know, you got to find out what they have. Romance that you know that that that, that doesn't exist. Just amazing. Thanks a lot for the call. Tom, Tom, Tom. 
Happy Life Kids. 1-800-5800-TOM. People always say to me, they say, uh, well, do you have a daughter? I, I usually tell them, I say, no, I usually have somebody else's daughter. <laughs> Sometimes twice. It's the Tom Likes Show. Tom Likas Show, Tom and from New York City. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. How do you do it? Talking to you guys with kids, how do you do it? I mean, you really do have to give up a lot. You really have to sacrifice. Is it worth it? 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Teresa on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey, Teresa. Um, how are you? Love the show. Um, I want to say that I totally agree with you. Um, if you don't want to have kids, then you shouldn't have kids. My husband and I have been married for 11 years, and we have one son. And the reason why we have one son is because when he was little, we realized that in order to, you know, give him everything um, financially, emotionally, teach him everything he needs to know, we had to, you know, invest a lot of time with him. I see these mothers and families with, like, three, four, five, six kids, and they're, like, frazzled all the time. And they don't have time to sit down with each kid every night, talk to them, help them read, help them, you know, go bike riding, teach them all that stuff. They're, like, totally frazzled and don't have time. And I think that's where the breakdown is, is when these parents have, like, kids upon kids upon kids and really don't realize the responsibility of what it takes to be a parent. Well, I think that's certainly true, but I also do believe there are some people who can't even afford to have one kid. No, for sure, and that's that's why I agree with you. Like, if you can't afford it and you don't want it, then don't do it because you're bringing in another person in this world. And while I wouldn't change, I love my son. I mean, he's awesome. But we've worked so hard in making sure he has everything. We don't have nannies. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I work hard with my son. I cook dinner. I bring him home from school. We do homework. It's a full-time job. But in that respect, now that he's older, like you were saying, you can't do things. Man, we do things with him all the time. We take him to concerts. We take him on vacations and cruises. And so we still are able to have a lot of fun with him because we've kind of, like, brought him up. And he's kind of like a little adult. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, uh, I do believe that a lot of people jump into having kids without having any idea how much work it's going to be. Yeah, and it's really sad for those children because those kids, they grow up to be just like them, having kids at like 17, 18, 19, don't know what to do, how to parent, and it's it's sad for the children. The children are the ones that lose out. And, and these people that have kids back to back to back, you know, and husbands are away in the military, they, they can't raise those kids by themselves. I mean, it takes... People. It doesn't take nannies. You got to be a parent, and you got to make sure that you're there for your kids. And you know, if you if you, your husband's away, or you know, you're just you know, you're home all day by yourself, then maybe you shouldn't have three or four kids. Maybe you should just focus on yourselves and building an income and a fam, you know, a house before you worry about having children. Yeah. You know, uh, what amazes me is that, uh, you know, with what I have, uh, you know, I've built up a, um, you know, good uh, reserve of cash and mm-hmm. I've got some real estate. Right. And I enjoy my life traveling and what have you. I have people coming to me all the time, all the time, and telling me that I'm lucky. Right. I'm lucky. And cool. it has nothing to do with luck. I made a plan. My plan is I'm going to support one person, me. Yep. That's now, exactly if right. I if I care to share with people the way I share with my nephew or my brother and his his wife, uh, if I care to share with friends, well, then I'll do that. Mm-hmm. But the rest of the time, I'm taking care of me. Right. 
because people, I don't think people realize, like, how much it costs, like, for daycare, for a baby. Like, that one gentleman who called earlier, and he was talking about the, you know, he loves having his baby daughter and stuff. He hasn't even hit anything. He's in the, like, oh, fun stage. Big deal, you change diapers, right? He hasn't even hit what, you know, things are going to cost later on. As they get bigger, the things cost more and more. Presents are more. Things are more. It's ridiculous. And... Yes, it's great to have a child, and I love my son, and Tommy loves your show. We listen every day when I pick him up from school. I wouldn't change it. But I also, my husband and I realize that one is all that we can financially give, and, you know, we want to be able to spend time with him every single moment that we can and teach him. We couldn't do that with three or four kids. There's no way, and we wouldn't want to. So we stopped. I love it. Yeah. Uh, finally, right somebody who, finally, somebody who thought about it before they did it. Absolutely. Thank you, Tom. My son says he loves you, and uh, if you could take us out with a thank you, Jesus. Here you go, Teresa. Thank you, Jesus. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Josh on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Father, how are you? Doing okay, son. Well, basically, uh, I got two kids, been married three years, uh, married young, had kids young, got my chick pregnant out of nowhere, and, you know, you're right, it's a, a big adjustment, and you do have to sacrifice a lot. You absolutely do. But, yeah, uh, you had and, no idea, uh, you, you know, had no idea. I'm, you know, I'm first time, long time, and uh, I listen to you all the time. It's great. I absolutely love to hear what you what you got to say. And uh, you know, I'm sort of one of those guys that that you talk about that isn't really prepared and sort of falls into this unexpected, didn't really plan for it. And um, you know, all I can say is that you know, you just have to have an ability to adjust. And just as with everything, just because you're not prepared at one point doesn't mean that you can't go ahead and make the adjustment and, you know, plan accordingly. Absolutely. And now what has happened to your life, Josh? Uh, things changed a little bit. You know, I ended up getting a house and uh, started my career and, you know, basically a uh, white picket fence, two dogs, the whole nine. Do you enjoy it? It's completely different. I do enjoy it, and, you know, from my take, all the corny lines that you ever hear about, uh, you know, you never thought you'd love your kid this much or, you know, blah, blah, blah. Every corny line that I had ever heard growing up, I got to say, it's all true. At least for me it is. You know, other people might not be as happy with it. They, You know, they're not happy with their wives or you know, their situation, but, uh, you know, for me, it's been a good transition, and, you know, it's it really has been great. Well, if it's working for you, I'm happy for you. Believe me, I, uh, I like people to find uh, in life what they want, and uh, what I don't want is people to be given things they don't want and don't need, but if you're happy, I'm happy for you. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's for everyone. I'm not saying by any means just roll the dice and go ahead and uh, you not use any protection. I mean, you know, it caught me way off guard. But, um, you know, it is what it is, and you deal with it. And uh, that's that. But I got to say, Tom, I listen to you all the time. I completely agree with you on pretty much every level, from relationships to finances to you know, alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> All right. Josh, thank you for the call. All right, can you take me out with a bong hit and a Snoop Dogg? I certainly can. Biatch. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Raul on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Raul. Um, long time listener, first time caller. Yes. And um, I wanted to make a few points just for the fact that um, I pretty much agree with pretty much everything you said. But when you uh, came up with this topic, I kind of disagree. I kind of disagree with you, Tom. Because, um, what do you disagree about? 
Well, about about you saying that, you know, you wouldn't want to have kids and it, it's a lot of hard work and, you know, I, the way you see your nephew and then you just give him away to your brother and then he has to do the hard work. But, you know what, I have two kids and, you know, I've, I've and it's funny because a lot of kids, I mean, a lot of, list, a lot of listeners that have been calling, they just seem like they just keep whining and complaining and maybe they, they weren't ready to have kids. And I think I think planning is what makes having kids perfect. Well, what is, can you turn the radio off there, Raul? It's confusing okay. you and me. Okay, it's already off. Yeah, but the the point is, everybody's not happy doing the same thing. Well, I'm, I mean, like you always say, maybe I'm the exception to the rule, but I've I've been doing even better. Once I, I once I got married and had kids, and I'm in the service, so um, it's been it's been great for me. I mean, just the fact that the fact that I'm um, waking up in the morning and seeing my daughter right next to me and calling me dad and being able to do all those fun things. And you know, if I was just by myself, which is which wasn't bad before I got married, but you know, having kids is is I think the the, the ultimate thing in life for me. Yeah, yeah, I understand what you're saying, and if you're ha again, I say the same thing. I'm not going to attack you if you're happy, and you like it. That's great, but it's not for everybody. So, so Tom, why, why wouldn't you try to have a kid? Because w once you had a kid, there's no putting it back. It, it's not like buying a car and saying, you know what, I changed my mind, I don't like the car, and bring it back to the dealer. That's right. You're, you're, you're absolutely right, Tom. But I mean. Wouldn't you want the challenge? Wouldn't you want the... No, I have enough challenges in my life, for God's sake. The Tom Likas Show.